Assalamualaikum. As I sat in the front listening to the speakers before me, my eyes were drawn to the verses of the Quran on the screen behind me. And as I read the verses that showed on the screen, I wondered, are you here today at this convention because you are seeking guidance? Are you here today because you are seeking advice? Are you here today because you are seeking wisdom? Are you here today because you are seeking community? Are you here today because you are seeking answers to problems and difficulties and tests that you're experiencing? Or are you here today looking for an answer to the question why? A question that we hear consistently in our counseling centers. Why am I in so much pain? Why do we suffer? Why are we tested? Why do we struggle? Why if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite wisdom, in his mercy, in his compassion, why does he put me through such difficulty? What is the purpose? What is the purpose of life? If that is the question that you are asking, if that is the question that you are seeking an answer for, then know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that answer, has given it to us in the Quran, in the understanding of why we were created, in the understanding of why we are here, in the understanding of what the purpose of life is. When we look to the Quran, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in narrating to us the creation of Adam, reminds us of when he called to the angels and in verse 30 in Surah Al-Baqarah, tells the angels that he has created mankind, he has created Adam, and he will send this humanity onto earth as a khalifa onto this earth. And in response to this message from Allah, the angels ask, they ask why? Why will you send to the earth those who will cause suffering? Why will you send to the earth those who will cause strife? Why will you send to the earth those who will cause trouble and difficulty? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the angels an answer. And in that answer is our answer as well. As he responds to the angels in the following verse, he reminds them, إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ علم That the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than a knowledge that even the angels could have. Now when we think of the term ilm, we often equate it with a sense of knowledge that we may find in books, a knowledge that we may find that we gain from reading, that we gain from experiencing. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us again and again in the Quran where we see the term ilm or a variation of the term ilm used over 854 times in the Quran. And we look to the very first verses that were revealed. The verses of Surah Al-Alaq when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us through the messenger, 
of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he commanded iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq khalaq al-insana min alaq iqra wa rabbuka al-akram alladhi allama bil-qalam allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam in the response to the angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds, reminds them that he has a ilm, he has a knowledge that they do not have. And yet in the opening verses of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us through his beloved messenger that he is the one who teaches. He is the one who teaches humanity. He is the one who gives us that guidance through the ilm. Now what is this ilm? When we go back to Surah Al-Baqarah, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمْ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا He teaches Adam, but what is the name? What, what is the teaching that he gives him? What is that ilm? He teaches him all of the names. What names? The gift of language, the gift of words. We often talk about knowledge being power, but think of how powerful our words are. Think of how our words can create our reality. Think of the words that have broken you. Think of the words that have lifted you up. Think of the words that have guided you, the words that assisted you, the words that advised you, because it is in these words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us ilm. And it is a ilm that even the angels do not hold, because the angels were created without that free will that we as humans have been endowed with. The angels were created and they knew their purpose to worship Allah. So when they asked why, they could not understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would create mankind who would be created with this free will to choose, to choose whether or not he would worship, to choose whether or not he would obey, to choose whether or not he would seek the ilm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endows us with. And we begin to understand the importance of this ilm. We begin to understand how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with this ilm so that we can make the right choice. Because when we look at the term ilm, we recognize that amal is not far off. That amal is a slight shift in the linguistic arrangement of the word ilm. And our amal is our action. And there can be no amalan salihan if there is no ilm salihan. How can we act upon good deeds if we do not have the knowledge of what is good? If we do not have that ilm, and so when we look to the verses that precede the narration of the creation of Adam alayhi salam, we begin to understand further this concept of ilm. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes to us in a few verses preceding this narration of the creation of Adam, he describes to us a parable a method. And the method that he describes to us is of the disbelievers, of those who do not believe. And how their method, their parable, or their analogy is like one who kindles a fire. A fire that gives off light, and yet they remain in darkness. And a few verses following that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after reminding us of this ghishawa that covers, this covering that covers the hearts and the ears and the tongues of those who don't believe and their sight, 
He reminds us in the Quran, that the disbelievers will be like those who cannot speak, who cannot hear, who cannot see. What is this sight that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to us of? And what is this light that he is referencing? When we speak of knowledge, when we speak of periods of time in our history, when there was a great amount of knowledge that was shared, we often label it as enlightenment. Because the light is what illuminates our basar. And it is our basar that we need in order to understand the ilm that is given to us. And basar is very different from nadar. Nadar is to look. Nadar is to see. But to be basiran is to be able to understand, to contemplate, to recognize what you see and to translate it through what? Through reason. Through aqr. And so we see in various places in the Quran, for example, when we look at Surah Al Rum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends verses 21 to 24 with the guidance of how do we gain this ilm, in which He reminds us, those who have that ilm, those who think. Those who hear Those who use their reason Because this is the purpose of our creation It is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Through an understanding Through a seeking of knowledge through a recognition that we have been endowed with reason and this reasoning has been given to us so that we may better understand. But how can we understand? How can we understand light if we have not experienced darkness? How can we understand joy if we have not experienced sadness? How can we understand the mercy and the compassion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we have never been in need of His mercy and His compassion? How can we be merciful and compassionate to our ummah, to those around us, to our communities, to the world if we've never experienced the need for that mercy and that compassion? And so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite wisdom, speaks to us of his light, when he speaks to us of the ghashawa that may cover those who cannot be enlightened, it is a refusal to seek ilm. It is a hesitation to obtain that ilm that stops those from believing. Because in Ayat al Nur, the verse of light in Surah An-Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us with another parable, with another description, another explanation of our purpose in this earth, the purpose of life. That there is a parable of the light of Allah and that His light is like the oil that soaks the wick of a lamp, a glass lantern that is in a niche that is far from the east and the west. And that the oil of that light, without even being illuminated by fire, without even being lit by fire, it lets out a light. A light that is so powerful that it illuminates, that it enlightens all that is around it. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that He is nuran ala nur, light upon light, then who are we? Then we may be that glass, the glass that refracts, the glass that allows that light to pass through, through our actions, through our ilm of Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
has not just created us to worship him without any ilm, without any fiqr, without any knowledge and that seeking of knowledge. He has created us to worship him by knowing him, by knowing his nur, by knowing his rahma, by knowing his compassion. And we can only know that by experiencing a need for that light, a need for that compassion. And so we are tested. And so we occupy this earth as the children of Adam and Hawa. We occupy this earth and we will be tested and we will suffer and we will struggle and we will go through difficulty. But we will know that Allah is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. And that for every test and every difficulty and every struggle that we experience, when we turn towards Him, we come closer and closer to Him. When we seek that ilm, when we know Him, then we will know how to heal humanity we'll know how to heal ourselves and we'll know what our purpose is jazakumullahu khair assalamu alaikum